What is going on guys, Fitcho here, and welcome back to the Valentino Rossi The Game Career Mode is part number 7. I just want to say thank you to all of you for the support recently on this series. You guys have been absolutely killing it, you guys seem to be loving this series, and I'm really loving making these videos, so I'll try to keep getting them out as quickly as I can. At the moment I'm trying to do one a day from... Oh, I have been for the last few days. I'll try and keep that up for a little bit. There might not be one on Sunday when I have my main F1 2015 series out, which is a fit joke career, which you should watch if you're not. Cheeky plug. But if you do enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Now, today I think we've got a few more Moto3 events coming up. We've got the Catalan GP and the Assen TT. And I think in between that, we might actually have a rally in Misano. So we'll see how much we can get through today. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's go to the Catalan GP. Hello and welcome to the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. Everything is ready now for the start of the qualifying session that will decide who will take pole position on the starting grid tomorrow. Out of the final corner we come. This was a pretty bad lap. And it is a one, wait, that's, there's the line for the MotoGP. It was a 155.599. It was a pretty bad lap. I absolutely butchered turn one and a few on the corners on the track, so we can definitely go a bit faster than that. Hopefully these bikes don't get in our way. We actually get turn one okay this time. Last time we ran way, way, way too deep. Out of the final corner we come. It's the time is now, the pole time is now Antonelli to 154.2, and we just smashed that with a 153.5. Oh, yes! What a lap, a one. 52.6, that is about 8 tenths up on what Jorge Navarro managed. I think that's where we're, we're going to stop. We're going to go back into the pits and have a little relax for the rest of this session and see where we end up. Yes, get in, pole position, another pole position, this time at the Catalan GP by 7 tenths of a second, almost 8 tenths of a second actually, over Jorge Navarro. But I'm not sure if we're going to be able to break away at the start of the race, because I said about 5 laps, I did about 5 laps before that qualifying lap, where it was actually a couple tenths lower than Navarro, so I think when it actually comes to race pace, we could be on for a big battle with Jorge Navarro. Without further ado, let's jump into the Catalan GP. Here we go, the Catalan GP. We are starting on pole yet again for the seventh round of the Moto3 season, and we are underway. Hopefully, we can hold our lead into turn number one. But it looks like third place, the Skybike. I'm not 100% sure who that is. Got a reasonable start, but they've all fallen in behind us. But it is a very long run to turn one. We've got this. We've got Finati coming up our outside, but we have the inside line into turn one. And we can hold our lead. But how long will that last? I might have been, I'm, yeah, I may have been quick in qualifying, but my average qualifying pace is about the same as Jorge Navarro in truth. So it'll be interesting to see how we go. But it looks like looking at the mini map without looking behind, we've actually already broken away a little bit, which is good news for me. Maybe not so much for you because there might not be too much action in this race. But we'll see how we go. The end of lap one, I've already pulled away a little bit from the trailing pack. But look at them all fan out as we have massive frame rate drops that are all over the track. Part of me wishes I could be a part of that battle, but at the same time, I just want to break away with this race and get another race victory. And out of the final corner we come in Catalonia, and we're going to win. Oh, and we've crashed across the line. Oh, wow. But we win. The Catalan GP with the fastest lap as well. Looks like we we're about two tenths quicker than Brad Binder. So our teammate got second, which is great news. A 1-2 finish for the Red Bull KTM team. And the top four, again, all KTM bikes. And the first Honda down in fifth with Nicolo, the Nicolo Antonelli. Let's have a look at the Riders' Championship. We are pulling away even further. We are now 23 points ahead of Fanati. And Brad Binder, our teammate, moves up into P3 and in the constructors we are pulling away even further now 76 points over Honda and I think we now have a rally event in Misano so let's jump into that here we go a rally event in Misano and as you can see the track is wet we'll see how we go in our little Ford Five, four, three, two, one. go now I have no idea where we are going because this obviously won't be the normal Misano layout. Oh, I've hit the hay bale. That's okay though. 
Yep, yeah, okay, stuff that. I will say the car handling on this game is not very good at all. This is obviously a bike game, it's not exactly their forte, the handling of a car, and it's pretty bad. Plus, I'm on a pad. I'm not used to driving cars on a pad. Oh, fuck it. Nobody saw that. Good, okay, we'll just continue. What is that braking line? That's just cut through there, nobody saw anything. That was probably even a quicker line, if anything. Oh, fuck, that's tight. Oh, I've spun it. How do I get away with that? Just cutting it so obviously like that. And I get away with it. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, it looks like the end is... Is that the end? Yes, that is the end of the Misano Rally. That was quite difficult. A lot of tiny chicanes and I cut the track a few times. But they didn't say anything. And even though I cheated, I still finished last on a lower difficulty. Oh, I'm so good at these rally events. <laughs> Far out. Almost nine seconds off Valentino Rossi's time, but like I said, the handling model in the cars in this game is shocking. But I think we've got the Assen TT up next, so we'll jump into that. Hello and welcome to the TT Assen in Holland. There's already a buzz of excitement inside the paddock, and in a few minutes race direction, we'll get the qualifying session underway. After all that rain that was falling earlier on, the weather has finally cleared up, but the track is still very wet. So it looks like the riders will have to go with the rain tyres, at least for the first part of the session. Okay, it sounds like it's going to be an interesting session. As you can see, the track is wet, but it has stopped raining. So over the 40-minute session, it's going to dry up. So we're going to go and just learn the track and set a few banker laps, but then we're going to have to come back out towards the end of the session when the track will be at its driest. And it could be a bit of a last man on track situation, or last man across the line situation like you see in F1 sometimes in qualifying. We'll see how we go. What the fuck? I just went to track and just got completely taken out. Okay. Not sure how that happened. But we must- oh shit. We must push on. For qualifying, we were about two seconds faster than anyone else earlier, but the track has dried up and we're now only about a tenth faster than second place. There's only about five minutes remaining in the session, so we're going to go back out and try to improve on our time. Out of the final corner we come, can we improve on this lap and take pole position? Yes, we can! By 1.6 seconds, that was a lot faster, almost into the 49s. And this will be our final lap, and we have really butchered that first corner. There we go, another pole position, this time in Assen. That's, I don't know how many pole positions in a row. We are absolutely dominating qualifying at the moment, and we have been dominating the races as well. Can we dominate here at the TT of Assen? We'll find out. Qualifying suggests we will. 1.3 seconds up on second place, which is Jorge Navarro. It's looking good for us in the race. Without further ado, let's jump into the TT of Assen. Hello and welcome to the 8th event of the Moto3 season. Today we're here in Assen, where the Dutch Grand Prix will be getting underway any moment now. The riders are going to have to put up with some inconsistent weather over the course of the day. At the moment, the surface is wet after some light rain, but we don't have any precise information about conditions later on. Here we go, we're on the front row, but there is light rain. It's going to be tricky because it looks fairly dry, but there's a little bit of rain around as we are off in ass. And as you can see, the spray coming up off my rear tire. So there's a little bit of rain around. It could dry up, it could get worse. We really don't know. As the commentator says, they really don't know. But we have held our lead into the first corner. We'll see how long that lasts. In a way, I kind of want to have a bit of a battle with some of the other riders. It has been a little bit boring recently, just drive, not driving, riding away with all the races. This is on the hardest difficulty, and I think if I went back to the back of the grid, it would be way too difficult to get through. So, I don't know if I, I think I might just leave it as is for now. Hopefully, we can have a bit of a battle. It looks like the bikes behind are quite close to us at this stage, and hopefully they can give us a bit of a run for our money. 
as it is raining through this this half of the circuit, as you can see. But it was dry, or the track wasn't dry, but it wasn't raining on the other half of the circuit, so it's going to be interesting. But it looks like we have actually pulled a little bit away from the rest of the field if you look at the mini-map. The wet conditions seem to favour us. And out of the final corner we come here in Assen to win the Dutch Grand Prix. Another race victory. We're absolutely dominating Moto3 at the moment. And this isn't the hardest difficulty. I don't really know what to do to make these races more interesting. But there you can see we won by over five seconds in a three-lap race. Our teammate finished second. We have the fastest lap with a 152.1. And our teammate who finished second is 2.4 seconds off that per lap. Like, he's fastest lap. So... Um, we seem to be dominating Moto3 at the moment. I'm really not too sure what to do. This is the hardest difficulty. I think if we drop to last to start every race, it would just be too many bikes to pass on such a hard difficulty. But let's have a look at the Riders' Championship. We're going to pull away even further. Now a 37-point lead, and our teammate is in third. We've got Finati in second. And we have a look at the Constructors. We are now 85 points ahead of Honda. And then we're going to get some reputation and VR points. Some nice 12,000. Here are my stats. We go up in everything but cornering by the looks of things. Maybe two in rainability. Yes, two in rainability. Almost three in rainability. But there you can have a look at all my levels. I'm now level 55 in breaking. 53 in rainability. 55 in um, throttle management, agility, cornering, and body position. And 58 in physical condition. And we now have the silver bonus for physical condition. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.